I saw a call from someone in Dublin and I picked that call and next thing they're telling me oh Tiso congratulations you have just been accepted to Bank of America as a go I was like what? to my channel if you're here on this channel my name is Chisong and I'm a software engineer and youtuber if you're not new to this channel good to have you back <laughs> so if you don't know this season is application season August September October November December companies hire along this period and this is something that I have come to know because this is the exact same period that I got the jobs that I did get. So in this video, I will be giving you a walkthrough on how to apply to one of those companies. And that company is going to be the Bank of America. Bank of America runs a global internship program every year for people from all parts of the world to apply for this internship. So this internship cuts across different fields. This internship cuts across legal, finance, business, and technology. So in this video, I'll be focusing on the category that I apply to, which is the technology analyst category. So if you'd like to apply to the Bank of America Global Technology Analyst Internship, stick to the end of this video because I'll be sharing tips, I'll be sharing guidelines, and I'll also be sharing the things that I did to help me get accepted into this program. So firstly, I would say that how I came to know about this Global Technology Analyst Program was from a friend. But before that, I knew that companies like JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, do these things every year. So there are several requirements if you're applying for the technology division in technology analyst program. The first is you need to have a certain kind of programming experience. You need to know any programming language. And you see programming languages listed on the application site, Java, Python, C++ or C, um, JavaScript, I think, I'm not sure. And any other programming language that you have experience in. And secondly, you also need to have a certain kind of project level experience you need to show them that you have built something you need to show them that you have collaborated in a team so those are the requirements that you have to have i don't know if there's any requirement for cgpa i will post a screenshot if there's anything like that and it is open to everybody people usually get this misconception that this internship is only for people that are staying abroad it is open to you if you're in rwanda if you're in nigeria if you're in kenya if you're in london if you're in the united states it is open to everybody so as I speak the application window is already open for interns to apply for this program so what do you need you need a very solid resume you need a resume that showcases your skill set this is going to be a very competitive application window so your resume needs to stand out your resume needs to speak for you when they are reviewing your applications so when you go to the website I will post the website in my description box when you go to the website you have to create an account and when you're done creating that account, you have to log in. Now, before I forget to mention, the application is very, very lengthy. And as much as the application is very lengthy, you also need to finish it on time because there's a rolling window. If you do not submit the application within that time frame, the application is not going to be reviewed. So as much as the application is lengthy, give yourself three days to make sure that you finish your application. So the first thing is you'll be filling your basic information like your name, you're going to feel where you schooled and your current CGPA. You're going to be feeling other things like your educational experience, your professional experience if you've had any, your work experience if you've had any, um, your referrals. I think I will post this application info on this video so you guys can see the things that you were meant to feel. So once you're done filling that application, there's the next thing that you're going to do called the higher view interview. The higher view interview comes up and you start the interview. And when you're done with this interview, it submits automatically. You don't even get to see what you answered or you don't even get to see how you did. So this higher view interview, your question pops up and there's a timer. I think it, it gives you like 10 seconds to think about the answer before you start answering and you click stop, meaning that you're done answering the questions. So this interview is a live interview where you get to sit in front of your laptop and answer questions that pop up. So nobody is actually asking you a question. These questions are the things that you're going to see on your screen. So let me give you an instance. I open my laptop, I start the interview, and I see questions on my screen. The question just pops up, and that question could be, when have you ever assumed the role of a leader, and how did you lead your team to success? What are the challenges that you faced? You're going to be answering behavioral interviews like, when was the first time you led a team? 
when was the first time you led a project a successful project when was the last time you failed at something and how did you get on top of that so those are the kind of questions they're going to be answering and you need to be prepared for this question because you do not know the exact question that they could ask you so if you're thinking of going through questions in the behavioral section of my book a tech is guiding to big tech companies i wrote down several behavioral questions that you could get asked during the interview so if you have that book you can check it out and start answering those questions before your interview so i'll always advise before you start this interview this live interview make sure you're ready make sure your room is well lit up make sure your face can show make sure your internet is good make sure that you're very audible and make sure that everything is crisp and clear because they don't want to be watching your videos and they cannot hear you, they cannot see you properly or the lightning is bad. So once you're done with your application, once you're, you once you're done filling your applications, everything is good, try to give it to someone else to look through what you've done. I always say this in all my videos, try to have a second eye on your application to make sure that you're not missing anything and to make sure that you're not making mistakes. So once you're done with the application, there is a step that I skipped there's also a point in the application where you're going to be asked questions. Now, on this point, you're going to be asked the role of technology in a global bank. You're going to be asked the roles and responsibility of a technology analyst in a bank. So the goal of this question is to make sure that you understand your responsibilities if you get the internship offer. And also to make sure that you understand the role of your division, which is technology, in a global bank. So this question, these two questions require, I don't know if they've changed it, but these two questions require a lot of research and your English has to be on point. You're not meant to make any mistakes with your grammar. Just make sure that you're conveying your, your, your answer in a very smooth way. So that's for the application window. So once you're done with the application, the bank is going to be sending you emails consecutively telling you that your application is still being reviewed. So they're going to be sending you emails like four times in a month or sometimes six times in a month. But you're definitely going to be seeing emails from them telling you that your application is still being reviewed. So if you are successful, I will post the timeline on this video. After a month or two, they're going to reach out to you with your final interview. This is the interview that is going to decide if you're going to get an internship at the bank. So your final interview comprises of three very, very serious parts. The first one is a, a light interview. They're going to ask you things about yourself, things that you've been able to learn. This one is on a light hand, it's like a behavioral interview kind of thing. Now, the second interview is going to be more difficult. This is more technical. I'm not saying you're going to be answering any Hakara, Fleet Code kind of questions, but you're going to be answering very technical questions. According to the programming language that you put in your application, I do not know if they're going to ask you, but you need to make sure that you're putting in the right information on your application. So from my own experience, I use Java as my application language, my programming language, and they ask me questions about Java. They ask me questions about object-oriented programming. They ask me questions about enumerations, polymorphism, and this is something that I prefer for. So you're not actually going to do any live coding, but you're definitely going to answer questions on your technical knowledge. You just want to test if you know the basic stuff and if you're a good fit for the company. Now, the third interview is very, very serious. I think the third interview is going to is somewhat going to decide if they're going to employ you on a larger scale. So now this third interview, you're going to be doing a PowerPoint presentation. Yes, a PowerPoint presentation. And this presentation is going to be about a project that you have worked on, if it's in school, if it's a personal project, if it's a group project. So for this side of the interview, they're going to be sending you guidelines before your interview day to just give you things that should be on this PowerPoint presentation. So this project is meant to showcase, number one, your leadership abilities, number two, your ability to collaborate and be a team player, number three, your communication skills and your research skills as well. So there are several things that you shouldn't miss on this project. Number one is the problem your project was trying to solve. Was it a software project? Was it a hardware project? Was it a research project? What problem was it trying to solve? Number two is the role that you played in that project. Were you a leader? Were you a programmer? Were you a product person in that project? Number three is the MVP of the project. After all said and done, what came out of that project? What did you have to show for that project? And number four, the outcome and the steps that you're going to take in improving the project or none of that. So this PowerPoint presentation is very, very important. Try to pick a project that shines 
your abilities in all of these categories. Don't pick a project that you are just an observer. Don't pick a project that you do not do anything. Pick a project that if there is something to talk about in that project, you're in the right position to talk about that thing. So for me, I think this was the most challenging round because the topic I submitted was hot, was very hot. So my interviewer kept on asking me questions, kept on graduating, what did I do? Um, kept on asking me questions about, my project had to do with AI, artificial intelligence, neural network and all that. So he kept on asking me questions on that topic and how I was able to do what I did. So don't just submit a project that you don't know nothing about. When you submit that project, even if you know something about that project, do extra research to make sure that there are no shadows in your head about that project and you can answer any question that comes your way. So that's all for the interviews. The first round, the second round, and the third round is done in one day. The first round takes about 45 minutes, a 15 minute break. You do the next 45 minutes, 15 minute break, and you now do the final rounds and you're done. So after all said and done, I feel like deep down, you would even know how you performed. So you now have to wait for a call back. So if you don't hear back from them, I don't know how long it took, but I'll post the timeline in this video, but you need to hear back from them as soon as possible. And for me, what happened was that after the interviews, it didn't come in an email or anything. It came in a call. I saw a call from someone in Dublin and I was just confused. I didn't even know who it was. And I picked that call and next thing they're telling me, oh, Jesus, congratulations. You have just been accepted to Bank of America as a go. I was like, what? And she was just telling me like, a brief on how the program is going to go usually you're meant to travel to dublin or uk depending on your division but because of covid um me and my friends that we got the internship at the same time we couldn't travel and we had to do it from nigeria so the person was just briefing me on the process of the internship things that i have to do moving forward and all that so i was happy yes i was very happy this was this was this happened in december and this was my the highlight of my Christmas, this was the highlight of my new year, this was the beginning of very very good things for me. So I hope I've given you guys an overview of the application process, the interview process and also the timeline it takes for Bank of America to get back to you. So I hope that you've learned a thing or two from this video and I have encouraged you or I've inspired you to apply as a Nigerian if you're watching this video. And for a more granular process, I think I'm going to be doing an application walkthrough sometime next week or next month i'm not so sure but you follow me on twitter turn on post notifications for that so guys thank you for watching this video i feel like this was a very short video so if you like this video please give me a thumbs up people leave a comment for me and please subscribe to my channel so that i can be sharing more experiences like this and also knowledge that that can be very valuable to you so see you guys in the next video bye